This week on The Big Show, we're back from the West Coast, attending premieres and this year's kickoff to the AFI Fest. We've invited two fellow uh, CCA members, Lanita Cook and the E-Man himself, Emmanuel Wasset. Wasset. To join us as we discuss this week, the week that was in film. Plus, we're going to review Belfast, Passing, and Red Notice. We'll have all that and more on episode 479, Keeping It Real with Film Gordon. Let's go. All right, and welcome to the latest episode of The Big Show, Keeping It Real with Film Gordon. I am Tim Gordon. Charles Kirkland Jr. is riding shotgun. What's going on, Chuck? Chuck, Man. chill out. Pass the Chuck. You, you Happy that. Disney Plus Day to everybody out there. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on, and I'm sitting here doing a podcast. I could be checking on on all the news. So, 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 since you brought that up, what does this Disney Plus Day thing actually even mean? Well, it's kind of like their uh, it's kind of like their uh, big day to let you know of all the stuff that they're doing, and so it's just a big promotion day. For Disney Plus, they, mm-hmm. they, they they got a deal on the on the service where you can join for a dollar ninety nine. But they're also talking about all the TV series that they're going to be putting out, including this Secret Invasion, uh, Tick, uh, not Tick, Tick, um, Iron Heart, and all these kind of things that they're they're doing on on the uh, service. So it's it's pretty interesting for for us comic book geeks. So it, so if you're looking at my face at home, right? You see this look. That means yeah. okay, cool. All right, but uh, <laughs> but the but the big surprise is that I've got two folks. One who I just met, this brother, which we'll get to in a minute. But I want to start with I need a cook who I am publicly publicly going to apologize to the sister because I teased her when I saw it out L.A. this week. I was like, girl. Sonic the Hedgehog was one of your top movies of the year. You are never coming back on this show again. But Lanita explained, and plus she is lovely. Fried dye laid to the side. She looking good. Look at you. You're bringing the style to the, to the room. Hey, Tim. Yes, Sonic the Hedgehog was one of my favorite movies, and you guys gave me a little bit of grief about it. But I explained to you that I, a movie isn't just about the composition for me, but how it functions in our lives. And Sonic the Hedgehog did something very special for us. So I appreciate you hearing me out. You know, it's really interesting. I love how you you kind of put all these fancy, nice phrases on Sonic the Hedgehog. You can <laughs> save that for one of the movies we're gonna talk about today. But it's okay. I'm gonna let you, I'm gonna let you do you. And then last but not least, my bra- my man coming from Shy. Now, Lanita, you know, we got this whole Midwest flavor today because Lanita's out in Kansas City. E is, you know, I call him E. E is coming to y'all from Chicago. I am I'm so glad. Bro, it took you 479 episodes to finally make the show, man. What's going on? I, I wanted to build up the suspense. <laughs> I thought it would make a nice little intro. Mission accomplished. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome aboard, my brother from the shop. All right, man. So we had a we had a, a fun-filled week, man. And Charles and I talked a little bit about this that we were gonna be. Head, heading to you know heading to LA over the weekend and to to go to these premieres of course we we all I think we all attended the same stuff am I correct we all did Power the Dog the, the yeah. that which wasn't a pre premiere but it was kind of like the screening the premiere of Power the Dog is that happening at the AFI or is that just the AFI I'm, I'm real confused with what Netflix is doing with Power the Dog well I think they did the same thing with uh, Power the Dog as they did with the the other movies that. They premiered someplace else, and then they gave us their, our, our time to watch it. Well, not true, because Belfast was the premiere that we went to uh, on Monday night. So Power the Dog, I think its AFI screening is going to be this Saturday, because some of, some of the, some of the uh, folks, including our own Wilson Morales, are going to be flying back out to check that one out. But um, yeah, it was really it was really interesting, and then so we we all attended Power the Dog. Check that out. Um, and of course, we're still under embargo because we really can't quote unquote review it until it comes out next week. Uh, everybody, I guess you you can either give me a thumbs up, a smile. How y'all feeling about Power the Dog, Charles? <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> I, 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 it's a good movie. It's good. 
Lanita? Well, I'm just wondering, I don't have a smile or a frown. I want to figure out how to do the straight. Just Oh, man. So you're talking about this. <laughs> that one right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's and, funny because that's the, I, my face was the frown when I first saw it. So, you know, I, yeah. I, I'm with but it's you. It's a conversation piece. It's a conversation piece. After conversation without, you know, too much review, did it change that frown a little bit? Okay. And E? I'm 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 giving one of those like, oh, I, oh, 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 you know, like, well, you know, I just, listen, I, I, I know, I know this movie is going to appeal to certain people, and I know it's not going to be a huge crowd pleaser, like one of those type of things. Um, it's a very, very niche film. So I'm, you know, I can appreciate it. I'll say that. Okay. <laughs> now, That's a powerful uh, word. I watched this on Sunday. Me and E had the opportunity to be on the Warner Brothers lot. And we went to a special screening of King Richard, which it was my second time seeing it. E, was it your first time? That was my first. Yeah. Okay. And Will Smith, uh, and, and I guess uh, Will Smith, Anjane Ellis, Sanaya Sidney, and I don't remember the, the name of the young lady who's playing Serena Williams, uh, and Tony Goldwyn, <clears throat> one of their coaches in the film, did the, the Q&A. And, of course, Will, you know, just basically took over the panel and killed it. But the movie was very emotional uh, in, in theaters. Now, Lanita, have you had a chance yet to see King Richard? uh mostly uh what i could see through all the tears yeah <laughs> <laughs> so 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 again we can't review this one either because it comes out next week um what's the what's the what's how can i say this without actually saying it and getting into trouble i think will smith is gonna be nominated and perhaps to me win best actor i think that is probably like the one thing that I could actually say, and I will say it again stronger next week, along with other elements of the film. Charles, I know you've seen it at Middleburg. Did you have any takeaways for King Richard uh, as we move? And, and again, remember, we're really early in the race right now because the Oscars is not happening until March, the end of March, right? So there's a lot of time. And, you know, Wilson and I talk about this offline a lot, Wilson Morales. And Wilson is like, you know, if a movie's not really peaking right now, that's good because, you know, you don't want to you don't want to get too far out early. And then there's some other movies that pick up momentum. We still haven't seen Licorice Pizza dropping. Uh, West Side Story still hasn't dropped. Nightmare Alley still hasn't dropped. Um, what is the other one? Um, uh, there's one more uh, film. I think that's uh, I, don't, I don't remember the a title. It starts with not not something that's coming out. I can't remember the title of the film, but. It's another one that's going to be award, an awards contender. So there are about four or five films still left. But how are you feeling right now, back to the original question of Will Smith, and how, you know, is it is it being properly marketed? You see Will out there working it. Um, it's, it, you know, it's in the conversation, but it's not like people are talking about, like, how Belfast and Power the Dog and some of these other movies, Tick, Tick, Boom, which we also have, I think many of us, everybody got a chance to see Tick, Tick, Boom? I have not yet. Not yet. Okay. Um, I have. I have too. <laughs> we ain't got look, it like you. <laughs> look, look, look. Oh, my God. Yeah. But there's yeah, still okay. some movies coming. How are you feeling about Will Smith and King Richard at this point? Well, first of all, it's Demi Singleton, who's the woman who plays, uh, is the girl Thank who you. plays Serena. So uh, I think it's a powerful film, a great uh early entry into the Oscar category, uh, you know, and that's the problem is that it comes out in just a couple of weeks, November 19th. So it's gonna, it's, it's early. So we'll see how it goes. Uh, Lanita, what are you, what are you feeling about Will and his chances this early in the game? We're still in, we're still in mid November, man. We got a long way to go. So Wilson Morales is the only one I listen to when it comes to Oscar prediction. So I cannot wait to hear what he has to say about it. What I have to say about it is I am very blessed. Uh, God gave me this sweetheart and these big man hands. If they don't give Will the Oscar this year, they get in these proverbial hands, okay? Did you just say these big man hands? <laughs> I learn something new every week, man. <laughs> E, what do you think? Now, now I sat next to E 
Yeah. And he got yeah. choked up a couple of times watching this yeah. movie. And, and and watch this. No shade. I thought I thought it played really well for the audience. E, what did you think, man? I mean, listen, I'm the wrong person to ask. This movie was made for me personally, I think, because I'm a father. My 14-year-old daughter just started tennis. She dragged me out to the courts. We'd be out there, you know, hitting the ball and everything. So everything about this movie was like directly connecting with me. Um, I mean, oh my goodness, just, the, I won't give it away, but like the interactions that they had, the conversations and stuff, oh my gosh. So yeah, this um, this was everything for me. And I, I, I don't care what happened. I don't care whatever is up there. This is getting my vote. Like, I hope it gets up there and I'll be right there with Miss Cook. Look, if he don't win, we riot. Straight up. <laughs> I'm saying, like, what does it well, take? Yes. What does it take? If he couldn't uh, yeah. get for uh, Pursuit of Happiness, he needs to get it for this. So, well, you know, so after after seeing the movie, did you go home and write a 78 page manifesto for your daughter? Man, listen, listen. I told I told my daughter we gonna watch it, and then we definitely gonna get to work. I told her that we getting to work. This, the 78 page manifesto when we review it next week, we will go more into detail because I thought that was man that that is something else. You come on, baby. Here's the deal, right? We need to have two more kids. I got a plan, and this, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, that's extraordinary to me. So we will we will definitely revisit that next week. So before we really talk about Belfast as a movie, which is why it's behind me, it's my backdrop today. I want to talk a little bit about Monday Night's experience at the new Academy Award uh, Museum that we all had a chance to check out, and I took some pictures. Um, I had a chance to walk across the, I think it was the Barbara Streisand Bridge on the, on the top floor that led out to that spacious, magnificent view. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not hating when I say this, it's just me being true and the show is called Keeping It Real. I enjoyed being in the building <laughs> more than I did enjoying the, the actual proverbial party that we were in the building. The party was nice. But the building was pretty special. And Belfast as a movie, which I've now seen three times, fantastic. Charles, what did you think about the, the building, man? Because, you know, I didn't get a chance to spend a lot of Charles time. Charles was off, you know, rubbing elbows and getting drinks and doing all the stuff that a first whoa, time. Whoa, 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 whoa. Don't watch the watch. You know, I don't, I'm not drinking. I didn't say you know, were alcoholic drinks. You can get drinks. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Man, man, <laughs> you had me nervous for a minute there because I thought you were saying you're going to enjoy the building more than the movie. I was going to. I was going to no, say no, no, what's no, going no, on. No, no. The, the but, body, uh, the yeah, body that, was cool, but you know, building was fantastic. That building. That then you talk about the Dolby the, uh, family atrium or whatever it was where you stood in there and if you spoke, it just reverberated through the whole area. It's a gorgeous building, and the and you, you look to the right, you can see the SAG after sign, and you look out, and you see Hollywood Hills, and it's it's beautiful. It is a beautiful building. Excuse me, a second, Charles. I just thought of something because Focus Features called me while I was while you were talking. I didn't say I didn't enjoy. I thought the party was nice. <laughs> I just, I just needed some more food, man. We were hungry. <laughs> hey, we we hungry. I mean, I didn't eat the, hungry, little, bro. the little things, the little snack things. You gave me some, you gave me some, gave me some fancy pie, lunchables. You know, there's some mean, fancy I mean, lunchables. I don't know what that I was. had about was. four vegan souffles or whatever it was. It was yeah, they, <laughs> hey, but that's why we all went to eat dinner first, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> so, so like Nita, what did you think about the space, the building? Well, so what I do in my other work is I'm the president of a museum foundation. And so I really appreciate uh, mm -hmm. preservation. I, I appreciate memory workers, curators, historians. And so I thought Belfast as a tribute to memory, uh, this was the building that was a perfect place to premiere it. Uh, the, the museum itself was closed when we went there, but you could see from where, where we did have access this beautiful tribute to the history and so i just i i was floored yeah just so yeah. honored to be there i got you and finally uh the man who i was standing out on the other side of the deck toward the end of the night and i, I remember telling e 
Man, they put a piece of wood up there. I guess they don't want jumpers out here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because uh, you really didn't get a view yeah. from the other side because, you know, they had it. It was hot. Listen, um, but, yeah, what'd you think, e? As someone who's not uh, best friends with Heights, I appreciated that ledge <laughs> that was nicely sealed off. I was very okay with that. But, no, you, you're not lying at all. Like, the, the uh, going over that Barbara Streisand Bridge and everything, the view was immaculate. Like, it was dazzling. I, I had to take a video of that because, you know, if you don't see it, you won't get it, you know. And it was just... I mean, the whole building itself. I mean, Tim and I were talking about like, yo, y'all got a fulfillion dollars to put in this sucker because this was nice, nice. That, like, space, that space, man, I don't want to know how much it costs. Man. Them. Because and, and not only did they build that structure, it. and what is it, the, uh, I can't, is it LACME, they pronounce it, L-A-C-M-E, the space. I took a picture, the lights outside. I mean, that yeah. whole space is just gorgeous down there. So if you're, if you're watching us do this now and you're out in Los Angeles, one of your stops needs to be over to that Academy Award um, Museum so you can check that whole space out. It is beautifully done. Um, a lot of years in the making for them to do it. So I, I can't, you know, I will probably be back out next month. So I'll definitely take a look and probably take the press tour during the day. Now, before we get to the movie, I got one more side that uh, me and somebody on this panel went out to dinner on a Sunday night. And as we were leaving the <laughs> restaurant, we noticed a long line down at LA Live. So we like get ready to jump in an Uber. Like, well, what's happening? The Wu Tang, what what you talking about? The Wu Tang clan is playing tonight. <laughs> Nobody told me that the Wu, the, the, the W was in the house. So E, um, first of all, I priced the tickets, man. So they these tickets weren't cheap to see. Uh, Ghostface, Ray, and the Jizza, which is what they were doing. I forget the name of the tour, but uh, Ray was doing uh, only built for Cuban links. Uh, Ghost was doing Iron Man, and the Jizza was doing Liquid Swords. I would have wanted to go, but you got to remember, we two days away, or at that time, we were two days removed from Astro World, man. I, you know, yeah. did you really want to be in a concert? I mean, if I had more notice. I probably would have gone. I ain't gonna lie. If I had more notice and I could have planned for it, I think I would have gone. Cause I, I listen, I know the whole Astro World thing was a situation. I keep my head on a swivel, like at all times. So if, if something just smell funny, I'm I'm fine of dipping out. So I would have went. That's just me. I would so 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 you must first of all, you're from Chicago. So I understand the head and the swivel piece. Uh, I'm from Newark, New Jersey, which is Chicago like. So I, I look, I'm with you. And and Man, Lanita, my body senses tingle sometimes, man. Look, Lanita with them hands from Casey. <laughs> <New York. laughs> I'm sure she's there. So so one last piece for all of the folks. Um, you know, and I'm not gonna tell you the name of the spot because they're not advertising. Uh, but I did take Charles Kirkland out to one of my favorite breakfast spots uh where i told charles to get the short stack and he listened to me uh charles how was breakfast man man that was the worst food i ever had in my no just kidding just kidding <laughs> I, I know you are that's why i'm like this look <laughs> <laughs> there was this guttural like, us in the chat guttural and find out what you're talking about if you want to know there was this guttural sound that came out of my body as i was <laughs> taking these, these pancakes into my mouth I never experienced in my life. This, these were some delicious, delicious, delectable pancakes, buttermilk pancakes. Oh man, with maple syrup. Yeah, it was. It was. Oh, you didn't have maple syrup, man. You had uh, I, boys I tried and them berry. Both. I tried them both. I did the you boys and maple and the boysenberry. And uh, I'm sorry. Look, 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 look at what I needed down there. Look, 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 look. Look. See, y'all don't really listen to me when I try to invite y'all out to breakfast. See, L.A., and which then, I... And then he dared yeah. me. He, they gave me, he gave me a short stack of three pancakes, and they're about this big. They were huge. They dared were huge. me to eat all three of them. Well, your first, of all, first of all, I didn't dare you. Yes, I, you did. I just didn't think you'd do it, because um, <laughs> I could not do it, because, you know, I'm not trying to walk around L.A. feeling uncomfortable. Um, secondly, LA is a foodie, it's a foodie uh, trip. Every time we go out there, I'm always looking for the food. And then I will end this by saying that Charles and I took a walk uh, in West Hollywood the morning before we left. And um, E, 
I, I know you're going to hate to hear this, man. We, we found the strip club while we were out there. Oh. Uh, right next door to a sandwich shop. <laughs> and on the other side of the strip club was a place where you can get your COVID test. So Charles made the great joke, like, you know, <laughs> you get your COVID test, up. you go in the club, and then when, you, when you've done, you get you something to eat. <laughs> <laughs> all in a row. All in a row. Right. That's a perfect Literally, setup. next to each other. Uh, and, and, and we continued to walk, and we met a young lady from Ohio. And, and in the store where we went and had breakfast, they gave us a couple of cookies in a plastic bag. You know, LL Cool J, you know, they weren't pink cookies, but they were some cookies. And I was, she said she was hungry. I reached in my pocket and gave out, as I was called, pla- you know, pocket cookies and got clowned for that. So we just had a lot of fun. That, that's why I said y'all should have hung with us. We were, we were doing fun stuff. No, my man literally reached in his pocket and get and offered her the cookies. She pocket ain't know cookies. him from Adam, and he, here he is. Hey, I, was, I was trying to be nice, man. The cookies were in plastic, man. I mean, it's not like it was like when you when you when your grandmama reached in and gave you candy that she had in her in her in a bra. It was <laughs> plastic. <laughs> Never mind, man. I just That's I thought that was a funny cookies, story, man. Even better. All right. So let's chop it up, man, about a movie that uh, is in theaters today that's coming out, Um, a movie that I happen to like a lot, which I think is one of the three or four best movies. And and, and when you use the phrase best movies of the year, it's kind of it it seems like it's, it's, you know, people say something's the best of the year. Let's just say for the purposes of the awards, that these are the movies that you're going to be seeing and hearing about over the next two to three months constantly and of course i'm talking about the movie belfast right um i saw belfast the first time mid-october charles was it middleburg film fest middleburg yes yeah, Middle- okay so we saw it the first time and and kenneth Bronner Bronner came and the running joke when we saw it again over this weekend when we saw it monday night at the premiere is you saw Bronner with those cue cards, right? That he was reading all this stuff. I've seen this film three times. That dude is giving the same speech all three times. And I was sitting next to this couple and I was like, I was like, uh huh, the, the inspirational night. And it all ends with the town called Belfast. And they were like, they started laughing at it. I was like, dude, I've heard this speech a bunch of times. From the cue cards each time. <laughs> the cue cards. So, but, but let me tell you what I thought about this movie, man. The thing that, that, I really, really got into is that there were two movies at the Middleburg Film Fest uh, that literally were about almost the same subject matter of two directors who were kind of telling their stories looking back, right? And you know, several years ago, Netflix had another one of these films. Um, How do you pronounce his name? Alfonso Cuaron, when he did Roma, is the the same concept, right? I know Steven Spielberg is working on his, you know, his I'm taking a look back film, my origin backstory. But you had Hand to God with Paolo Sorrentino that played in Middleburg, and then you had Belfast, right? So two films, same subject, both done entirely 180 degrees different. Paolo Sorrentino's film, because of how stylish he is, you know, and all of the little things that he does with characters, his film is really over the top, is entertaining, kind of weird in some spots, but I love his film, so it really works. So I was like, let me see this Belfast thing. <laughs> Belfast is kind of quiet. Um, you know, it's in black and white. I love, like, all three times I've seen it, I love the opening, which is all done in color, right, which is Belfast today. And then when you get to a certain scene, you get to that wall, and when you go over the wall, the wall takes you into the story. So I thought Kenneth Bronner just really knocked this movie out the park, man. I mean, the story of Buddy and living in this neighborhood, the film starts on August 15th, 1969, when he's introduced to the troubles, you know, um, his father's away working, you know, doing someplace else, comes home during the week. And in the midst of all this chaos and all this confusion that's going on in his neighborhood, the fact that we see Buddy, the film through Buddy's eyes, and Buddy allowed to be a kid, you know, we see him having these conversations about religion and why are y'all making me go to church? And I got this little girl in school I like, and I'm going to go get me some advice from my grandpa played by current. How do you pronounce it? Kieran? Kieran Hines. Hines. Kieran Hines. And uh, my, my, uh, my, my grandmother played by uh, Dame Judy Dench. Uh, so in spite of all that, we still maintain his childlike innocence, you know, 
he's he's watching, you know, um, um, High Noon and, and Liberty Valance. I mean, uh, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and the man who shot Liberty Valance. He's reading, you know, the Thor comic book, which was funny to everybody since he would later appear in Thor. So there was a lot of stuff. It has a 97 minute runtime. I think uh, Hines is absolutely fantastic, who I think might actually win Best Supporting Actor this year. Jamie Dornan, who we didn't even talk about at the uh, after party, who tore the house down, recreating a scene from the movie, singing Everlasting Love uh, to the crowd. This movie, to me, it, it's not big and showy like King Richard is, right? But I think of all the movies that I've seen this year, it's the one that I think has the best shot of getting to the finish line and passing. And I'm not saying, you know, I, I know we got two people on the phone. I mean, on the show who told me that if Will, Will, now is it if Will doesn't win or if it's King Richard doesn't win? For me, it's if Will doesn't win. Oh, so it's Will. It's okay. It's Will. It's I, I Will. Think, I think Belfast, I, and I know it's early, Belfast just has all the elements and the way Kenneth Brana is, is hitting the streets to promote this movie, you know, Will Smith as an actor in the best actor category is going to be tough to beat. Belfast as a movie is going to be tough to beat. Um, so, Charles, I know what you think about the movie, and we'll get to you last. You got the anchor leg on this one. Lanita Cook, what did you think about Belfast, and have you seen this movie more than once? I've only seen it once, and I, I do want to see it again. So that's an official part of my review is that I think it's double take worthy. I do, uh, when I was going in, I was struck exactly like you about how it was in color. It, it reminded me of like uh, the beginning of like a Harold Ramis movie where it's got that jazzy music and kind of uh, picturesque. And then we go over that, that wall and then we're transported. So for, just the transition alone, I said, okay, I, I want to be moved and I, I was um, like in, like you got me already, like just all from the very top. Right. So. Got it. E, what did you think, man? So I wasn't like, um, this is definitely well, a movie I want to see a second time because my initial impression was that this checks off all the boxes for a best picture, right? But there was, for some reason, I didn't feel initially impressed. I don't know what that is. And that's why I want to go see it. But at the same time, you recognize the beautiful cinematography. I love the fact that they went um, black and white. And even uh, when we went to the press conference and we heard his explanation, uh, Kenneth Branagh's explanation as to why he wanted to do it black and white rather than color. It was to, as he would put it, to focus more on the characters because all the color can be distracting. You know, when you <laughs> have it in black and white, now you have to figure out and connect with the characters and their issues. And I thought the movie excelled in that perfectly. Um, I also appreciated just, you know, like you all have mentioned, like just being transported and really feeling as though we were taken back in time. And that is yet again, something else you want a movie to do. You want a movie yeah. to pull you in and have you experience whatever yeah. the creator's you know intention is. And I thought they uh, excelled at that too. I mean, the performances were on point. Um, you know, there were some really uh, um, emotional scenes. I love the fact that it was able to balance and blend, you know, the serious stuff with some of the humorous stuff that caught me off guard. I didn't know it would have so much humor in it. Um, I almost was getting Jojo Rabbit vibes from it, but like, you know, not as comedic. Um, but yeah, I mean, listen, this movie is definitely a solid movie. It is worth seeing. Um, you know, and I'm, I'm glad that, you know, Tim, you kind of gave that uh, barometer of what it means to be a best movie. And it really is relative to what's playing that year right. and in that time frame, right? Because nobody's saying that this is the best movie ever made. Um, but yeah, relative to what else is coming out or what has come out, this does look like it has a very solid chance of not only being nominated, but possibly winning. But um, but yeah, for me personally, I do have to give it a second shot. 
um, just so I can formulate my thoughts a little bit more. But the the first thing that I, I walked away from um, thinking was if this movie was made in film school, it gets an A, right? Like that's, <laughs> that's fine. You, you, get, you win, you get it, you know, but um, when it comes to, I think now what I want to gauge is how it might appeal to people that are not used to these type of films, not used to this pacing, not used to this genre. Um, and I like to kind of incorporate that in my overall impression. But yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, solid movie all across the board. Got you. Uh, if, I, if I can, ahead, can, I, can, I, can I press? So the, I, I kind of had the, a similar sense that they're, all of the boxes are checked. It is beautiful, visually beautiful. Uh, I had a, an emotional response. I laughed. Uh, everybody's fallen in love with Jude Hill, the little boy. Who, and, and, and so there are these wonderful things, and they've come together seamlessly. And so I want to ask you, Eman, it, 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 what do you think is missing? Because is it, it, is it a soulfulness that's missing, something that cannot be constructed? Um, what do you think it is? That's that's why I want to go see it for a second time, because all the technical stuff for me worked. Yeah. What I yeah. want to do is because, I, you know, listening to Tim talking about he saw this for the third time. And from what I was hearing, it sounded like after every re rewatch, it got better and better. So I wanted to kind of put that to the test, because I do think that there is something intangible there. And I don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. But that's why I want to kind of let this move. I wanted to sleep on it first and foremost, you know, so I've sat with this movie for a little bit, but I want to give it another shot. And then I'll probably be able to answer your question a whole lot better. Yeah. And for me, like, I thought it was a beautiful film, but I was more moved and nobody's talking about the harder they fall in terms of an Oscar bid. Yeah, but for, for me, sure. that movie um, moved me. Yes, It excited me. I thought, oh man, if put the needle on the record was a command for a movie, this would be it. And and for me, this is a great Oscar, Oscar piece, but nobody's talking about it. So my personal barometer of what I think should be honored with that highest award is something more like that. So I'm in for Belfast, but it's a little bit outside my personal taste. Ooh, can right, we so, talk about the harder they fall? Because if we do, I'm we, we, I'm we are not talking right. about the harder they fall today. <laughs> okay. but, but but I will say something that I, I you know I understood it was a compliment, but the way people kept calling me, I had this this conversation three times yesterday with somebody who talked about films, and they were like, you know, that's going to be a solid black real award contender. I was like, what are you trying to say? <laughs> but I get it. I understand that that's a compliment. Because you know, I was talking to Wilson. Wilson, like, no, 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 that's gonna be that's gonna be a solid black real award pick. And I'm like, okay, I think, okay. but but that's good. But but see, E is the only one that's that's on the show today, who we didn't meet early enough, so we have to wait to open up the books in March to get E in uh, on the voting academy. But you you'll understand what we talking about with this with this black real award thing. That's really really precious. Um, uh, we also announced before we get to Charles with the anchor leg that the Black Reel Award for your consideration site is live now. So as soon as movies start coming in, uh, people like Lanita Cook and Charles Kirkland will be able to go on and put in your little special pin. And I ain't saying nothing. I'm just saying, watch this. That's what I do. That's, that's all I'm saying. That's all we do. So Charles Kirkland, you got any more everlasting love? Because you gave the movie an A today, and I would absolutely agree. Um, now, Charles, you've seen it twice now, right? I've seen it twice, yes. Okay, you've, seen, you've seen Belfast twice. And um, as I said, uh, for both E and uh, Lanita, who don't do this show a lot, Charles and other people always tease me because I started off doing this, man, like 30 years ago as a film historian. So I got like a human computer of movies, characters, scenes in my head, right? So Charles is always like, you showing off. I'm like, no, I'm not showing off. It's just, I know this stuff. Like, there's a lot of history. So when we watched Belfast, you heard me talk, Charles, earlier about Hand of God. You, you heard me talk about Roma, the stories of directors who are revisiting their past. Um, what did you think about this film and how it plays? I know what you like it, but I'm saying, I'm thinking about it from a, a standpoint that we're all critics on this show. 
So we see we see film kind of in, in, you know, analytically and critically as we try to dissect and break films down. But then I get calls from my friends who are not <laughs> film people and they're like, I don't understand. Why, <laughs> why do the critics all like these movies? I'm like, if you had to watch the crap we had to watch all year, <laughs> here, you're like, oh yeah, that's good right here. <laughs> so Charles, give me, give me your take and, and further elaborate on what I thought was a really great review that's running on the filmgordon.com right now about Belfast. I think the comparisons, I mean, you've mentioned Roma a couple times mm -hmm. and how this is a, re a reflection upon the childhood of this director. This movie, if Roma won for best picture then. You're talking about movie, the CCAs. Yeah, if this film is clearly, I say head and shoulders above Roma because of how it moves, how it breathes, how it communicates to the audience. I think this is the best work that, as a director, that Richard Bra uh, Kenneth Branagh has ever done, um, including uh, being uh, Henry V that he did way back when. So uh, I, I love the way, uh, again, what Lanita and Emmanuel have said is pr correct. It, technically, this is a perfect movie. But for me, it also touched me personally because I, I, I had some friends who had gone through the Belfast experience and, and we talk about the uh, Catholic versus Protestant wars that were, that were developing. These are, and being a seminarian that I am, these are some of the things that, I'm, that I research and have, have talked about in other realms. So the movie communicated to me immediately when I first saw, I, I didn't need a second uh, screening to understand what was happening in the film and, and how it communicated to me emotionally and visually. So I think it's a stellar piece of work. I did give it an A in my review. But again, it's early. Uh, we, we don't know what else is coming. Right. There, there's a lot of good work out there. But right now, yeah, this is the for, for, front runner. I do think that The Heart of They Fall should be in, in the consideration. It's a Western that, and, and the Academy loves Westerns. So I, I think that this has just as good a chance of being in there as, as, as Belfast does. Okay, so let me, let me just say this because, you know, you and, I know we're not supposed to talk and Lanita about keep trying to pull me into this Heart of They Fall thing. Right? <laughs> what's, what's about to happen? Uh, last year we did a uh, real forecast for the Black Real Awards where we would sit down and break films down and we will have real forecasts. So if you guys want to discuss the heart of the fall, there's going to be a real forecast coming up that we're going to do on the Black Real Award side where we will delve into that film and the next film that we're going to discuss now that just dropped on Wednesday, which is uh, Rebecca Hall's uh, adaptation of Nellie Larson's book from 1929. Of course, that book is called Passing. Rebecca Hall, who I had an opportunity to interview at the Junket a couple of weeks ago, was, it was, I was telling Charles a funny story. Um, I started off by saying, you know, I'm going to ask you this question. I know it's going to be a detailed answer, and I hope to see you on the award circuit so we could kind of talk about it more in depth. And I asked her about her connection to the material because she just found out over the past 13 years that she's biracial and that her mother had been passing and, you know, her grandfather was passing and all of this other stuff she found out. So she gives this answer that's got to be about five or six minutes long. And I said at the end, well, my work here is done. <laughs> <laughs> but but the publicist came in and said, your time is up. The publicist is like, <laughs> oh, oh, like I, I got all I need. But, but I will say this much, that passing, as I wrote in my review, was that thinking about it from film history, 1949, we had stories like Pinky. Uh, we had The Lost Boundaries. Um, it has been tackled more or less in recent films. It was one more film that I, I referenced where uh, passing was in. But it's something that people of color, are, and when I say people of color, I'm talking about Black people, are always familiar with folks in our community who had passed or, or legacies of passing. And I thought to me, when I first watched it, that it took a couple of viewings in order to really kind of formulate my opinions on it. Because the first time I watched it, I was like, yeah, okay, I understand the black and white. The fact that I've interviewed and had met both Tessa Thompson and Ruth Nega, and I'm like, neither of these guys look close that they could pass for anything, right? 
But I think the genius, much like we talked about, or we didn't talk about Belfast with the black and white uh, cinematography, the cinematography here is what really makes passing work because we actually do, or, 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 or the audience is under the impression that these two actresses are passing. And when I talked to both of them in an interview, I talked about the fact that it seemed like Irene's character, which Tessa Thompson played, or Rini, as she was referred by Claire, Rini could pass and has occasions in the film, at least at the beginning when we see her passing, or you know, giving the illusion that she's white, she did. She does it more or less for convenience, right? You know, I'm shopping for my kids' toy. I want to sit at this restaurant on a hot day, etc. Right? Where her friend Claire, played by Ruth Nega, is living that life. And now, when the two of the, the two of them cross paths, it's, it's almost like there's a spark that comes out in her mind, and she's like, you know, I really miss my people. I miss the food. I miss being around them. I, I miss like their, you know, uh, the, the way we communicate with each other. I miss it all, and the, it draws them together. Um, it's funny because when my lady watched the film with me, she was like, "She, she, she flirt with my man's husband." I don't understand. I was like, "I didn't, as a man, I didn't see that." And I talked to Andre Holland. No, no the men didn't see the flirting. But I, I so, so I say all that to say. That I thought, shut up, y'all. I still want like to say that I thought Passing was a movie that's really slowly paced, which may not appeal to everybody else. But I think if you really are into the subject matter and you really kind of follow the story, I think that there is a gem in there. I love the acting performances of Thompson, Nega, and Holland. Um, I think Rebecca Hall, who I've watched a lot of her films and had no idea that she was biracial because... You know, you can't say you're passing if you don't know. But I think this movie, uh, you know, has has really done wonders. And uh, I'll start with E on this one. Uh, talk about passing. And 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 most importantly, is Rebecca Hall coming to the cookout now? Do you invite her now after passing? Oh, so, I, w- I wish I could give you some great insight on this, but I have been put on hold uh, on watching this, mainly because my wife wants to watch it. And, you know, a lot of that is also, I mean, she doesn't deal with passing, but she is of fairer skin. So this relates to her a whole lot more. So, I, you know, she's like, don't you watch this until I see it. So <laughs> I, unfortunately, I, you know, I had to, you know, oblige by that. But uh, no, no, I'm not giving no cookout passes. I feel like those are <laughs> going out a little too, a little too easily nowadays, you know, uh, uh, maybe. After watching the movie, we'll discuss whether she can get a plate. She might get a plate. I'll say that. Mm. Lanita, give me your thoughts on passing. And is she is she coming to the rib spot in KC after this movie? Ooh, you know what? The rib spot in KC is for everybody. So we're going to put that on the table. Up front. Yeah, okay, come, get, <laughs> come get this BBQ, okay? Uh, what, I, what I do want to say about passing is... Uh, it goes back to what you said about the flirtation. I'm very surprised that the guys didn't see the flirtation. Whoa. Um, but what it made me think, because then the movie became less about race and passing. And I do want to say that passing is not an issue, or I don't see it as an issue of being biracial or multiracial. I see it as a Black issue. I think that it, it is hands down all of our issue because Blackness deals with this this is this is about anti-blackness uh so there's that so yes come to the cookout honey um but what i do want to say is the movie became less about race and the issue and more about this complicated kind of love which is acceptance uh what i saw is that when you find something about yourself that you can accept uh and it burdens you and and maybe there's a little bit of self-loathing when you find somebody who accepts you you thank them you need that acceptance but then you vilify them for accepting something in you that you could not and that's what I saw when she's trying to take her family to dismantle her family and she says I will do whatever I need to do to get what I want and I thought this this um Gosh, what would you call this? This beasting her. That's what the way I said. She's she's coming in your life, honey, and she's taking your man. She's influencing your children. She's you know influencing your maid. 
all of these things, she's, she's taking your place and she's beasting you. And so uh, I thought that was more about this complicated kind of love acceptance. Wow, the, 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 she did a Jay-Z to take over. <laughs> wow. Man, I mean, but you know what? That's a, that's a really good perspective. And that's a perspective that my significant had. So I, I totally yes. get it. Uh, Charles Kirkland, man. Um, you know, we, we here in D.C., man. Can she come to the go-go, man, after after this? And, um, you know, and what did you think about? <laughs> Look at his face. Can she come to the go-go? And, oh, and, and, and what Again, you if, if, if she feels the go-go, she's welcome at the go-go. But don't bring no ambrosia salad or no corn pudding <laughs> to the picnic. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> Look at yeah, me anyway. Look at me anyway. now. They're like, what? <laughs> um, I, 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 I love Lonita's take on the film. I, 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 that's one of the things that I saw right away was her, that flirtatiousness that she was having with uh, Rini's husband. And I really thought that it was leading in a certain direction. But I, I'm glad that it didn't because there were a lot of references to some uh, bad things that were happening to people in at that time. And I thought that was where it was like a foreshadow, but it didn't go that way. So, um, yeah, I, I think it, there, there was an envy there that she was having toward the, this this life that she really thought she should have had. But she rejected to marry this when she married this white man who uh, also hates Negroes. And I, I use the neat word and, and, and nicknamed her Nig, which yeah, I thought was really cool. interesting. Like, I mean, that was horrible. That was horrible. So there, there's a lot of the things about this movie, and I was I was one of the ones that said this movie is really slow. And even though it was like only an hour and a half long, it was really slow in its pacing. Slowly, slowly paced. Slowly and, paced. And so it was kind. Of, it's kind of a hard watch as well because the the topics that are covered in this film just aren't you know, very taboo in the black community. And so, uh, you know, it was a tough watch. It's a good film. I, I appreciate the performances that Nega and Thompson uh, turn in both here. Both here. Um, the direction is interesting, I would say at best, but uh, it, 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 it was just okay for me. So, so before I let this go, because, you know, um, I'm not as really pressed to talk about Red Notice because there's a review on our site for Red Notice. I've done a review of Red Notice, so you can find out. Red Notice is really kind of cotton candy to the two movies that we're talking about now. But let me, let me just hit one more point about passing, right? Because we're going to talk about this a lot during this award season of the pacing of these films. Like there's a film that we're going to talk about next week called Power the Dog. Uh, I've seen that a couple times now, and I think it's, <laughs> I can't give an opinion on it because I'm embargo. I just think that it was better the second time than when I watched it the first time. I liked it the first time, but I liked it more the second time, but the pacing is slow. Um, the only films that I've seen, especially recently, that the pace doesn't really throw me off is Tick, Tick, Boom, which you guys haven't had the opportunity to see yet. I thought the pacing on that worked well. I thought Bruised, Halle Berry's film, the pacing worked really well on that. Um, Hand of God, I think, despite the fact that I like Paolo Sorrentino, that's a movie that's coming out in a couple of weeks that has some pacing, some pacing uh, issues as well. You didn't think it had pacing issues? It, there, there, I don't think there were pacing issues. It was just long. I mean, I, but everything moved, <laughs> everything moved in the film, but it, but it was, I mean, it, it was paced very well, but it was just a long film. It's a, so it's a long film, but I still say, the length well, well, of a pacing film issues, the pace of the film. No, you're right. Pacing issues may not be the issue for that film, but for Power the Dog, uh, I don't think Belfast has pacing issues. I thought Belfast kind of worked the way it should have. Um, King Richard definitely doesn't have any pacing issues because... Will Smith and, and, that, and that cast of those two girls, they keep that story flowing and moving. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else I've seen. No, I don't think, I, I think, but the pacing is going to come up with some of these films. And I'm anxious to see stuff like West Side Story, uh, House of Gucci and other films that, uh, and House of Gucci, especially, especially because, you know, we all talked to folks that were out there that some people had early, early advanced screenings and it was very mixed. <laughs> there were there were a couple of people that loved it and there were about several more that were like mm -mm. 
Hmm. <laughs> Wait, did you see it? Please. She's looking forward to it. I haven't seen it. it. <laughs> I haven't seen it, it and I'm Which excited. One? I have. Hello, House of Gucci. Gucci. No, I just got the invite for it. Okay, I, I was just checking. La, Lanita had the had that stank face hat, and I was like, "No, it's I, not." Now, I will say I haven't heard very many positive things. Like I haven't heard people <laughs> oh, overwhelmingly man, man. loving it. But man, let me talking. tell you, they, they're jamming, and, and I'm assuming in your markets they're doing the same thing. So next week they're jamming us up. I think we got Licorice Pizza, yep. um, House of Gucci, House of Gucci. the yep. Tragedy of Macbeth. Um, what am I? What am I leaving out, Charles? There's a um, bunch of there are like seven movies, man, that are yeah, screening next yeah. week. In yeah, Canto I, 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 and something else. Right. There's another we one. Just got all those. Like I just got Licorice Pizza right now. Like oh, just and by the right way, now. Cyrano. I think they sent the they sent something out for yeah. that. I saw that at Middleburg. Um, Cyrano. I'm surprised. I mean, honestly, I am surprised that nobody's talking about that movie. We saw that at Middleburg. There were tears in the theater. Peter Dinklage mm. was great in Cyrano. He really was. So, that yeah, man, that, that's a really – now, the other okay. film, there's a, we saw The Lost Daughter, which is coming out a little later on. Olivia Coleman, I think, is way better than the movie. I, I thought they misused both uh, Dakota Johnson and uh, Ed Harris. So I was like, eh. I mean, she's good. Um, I'm trying to think of what else we saw because we saw a bunch of movies at Middleburg. Come on, come on. Uh, if you like little the little boy in um, uh, Belfast, right. wait till you see the little boy who stars with Joaquin Phoenix and come on, come on. That's really well done. So there are a lot of, and, and again, part of, of, of why I tell, you know, like, you know, I'm president of our Film Critic Association here in DC and I've been telling people you need to take advantage of every early screening of movies you can because you don't want to be in a situation that a lot of my brethren are going to be locked into next week where you sprinting from movie theater to movie theater. And, and Charles knows they, they had the audacity because Charles was like, well, th these theaters are close to each other. I'm like, Charles, they right around the corner. And Charles is right. They're like five blocks away. So you got to sprint out of this to go, to go five blocks down the street to the next movie. You don't want to be that dude. Just go to some film festivals. Go to TIFF. Go to Middleburg. Go to AFI. Just watch some movies and you can save yourself a lot of time when you get to November. And Nobody, uh, no comment on that? I can't. Oh, I, I, can't got, do I, got, I can't. Agree. I can't. Agreed. The only reason I can't do that is because I feel like if you go to the film festivals, you're not just going there for the one or two movies. Like, I mean, that might be your interest, but you got to watch at least 10 to 15 and, yeah. you know, really provide coverage. I mean, it's work, you yeah. know, like what we're doing is yeah. work. I'm just saying, I'll take my chances with doing work on seven titles than the 15 at a festival. <laughs> Charles, 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 you got to pick your back. Charles, do we want to, do we want to give, uh, give E our schedule on how we do this? Because, because Charles and I go, we went to Middleburg and split it in half this year, right? So I was like, um, I'm going to watch this. Charles was off watching some other stuff. And at the end of the day, what I'm trying to tell you, and, and I say this with all the love of my heart, man, as a guy that's been doing this for a long time, bruh, one, when I was young, when we were young in the game, we first started our Critics Association. This is long before Charles came along. This is what they used to do. You ready? We would close our voting the last... Friday, I'm sorry, the first week, the first week is not closed. So that Friday was like the last cutoff, right? And what the studios used to do is at 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock at 7.30, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we'd have movies like back to back to back for like four and a half days. So you would have to watch, what's that, 12? You had, They would jam 14 15. movies between Monday and at, at, at 10 in the morning to, to I think the last one, because they couldn't show 7.30 because we would cut it off at 5. So the last one would be at like 2. And I remember, man, those weeks, man, me and all the critics in this market, man, we were walking around bleary-eyed like zombies because, <laughs> because, because again, you, they jamming all the movies at you at the last minute and then you're trying to remember all these movies and all these performances. And they did that for like maybe the first... I want to say of our members of our group, they may have done that like the first five years. And then it got better where they we were able to start understanding that you need to go to some festivals. 
but you don't want to be that yeah. guy, man. I mean, maybe you do want to be that guy. I don't want to be that guy. <laughs> like, yeah. I'd much I think it's, I, oh. I absolutely think it's a better strategy to go to the festivals. I just attended my first festival, yeah. the Tallgrass Film Festival as press, and it's like a lot of work to do, but getting all of those screeners at the end of the year, the first time that that happened, it was like, I, I felt like a little assaulted. I was like, what's happening? <laughs> Seven, eight movies in my in my box. I was like, no, I can't do it. So he, I like- he, he likes being overwhelmed, man. Cause you know, like you said, there was a day and they don't do that anymore. There were a day they used to send screeners out and I would walk around with a bag of screeners, right? Like all these movies. And I was like, ow. So, you know, I, I, I'm telling you, man, E, I've learned, man. I go to Toronto now and this year, uh, we did, of course they did it virtually. Uh, the first time I went to TIFF was two years ago. I think I saw, was it 20? Cause I, I usually go to film festival. I watch movies. Charles will tell you, I watch movies. I'm doing 20 movies. We did, I think we covered 40 movies at TIFF this year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But let me ask you, let me ask you this, because if, you, if you're talking about strategy, do you go watch the movies? When do you write your reviews? Because I think that's what E-Man is getting at, is yeah. seeing the movies, I can watch the movies, but when do I write and post? In the, get, yeah. the, good yeah. Thing yeah. About, the good thing about the festival is you do oh. not have to turn in a complete review on a film that you see at a film festival. A lot of times they're still now embargoed. You watch this, you can, but you don't have to. Right. right. Gotcha. This is actually I wish we would have had this question 10 minutes early because this, this is a lot of strategy and some stuff I'll share. But what I will give you the answer to and Charles figured it out first because nobody understood what I was doing. Because every time I go to TIFF, I watch lots of movies, but I never get a chance to cover them all. So this time, since it was virtual, Charles, do you want to do the honors or you want me to break down this brilliant strategy I came up with? <laughs> well, you you go and you find somebody who's reviewed the film and has a, a similar opinion of the film that you do, and you load it up on your site with the uh, and say for the rest of this article, go to I, I put I put half the review up. So yeah. if you go if you go to my site now and you hit Tiff at the top, there are forty reviews on there. I didn't write any of those reviews. I just <laughs> but I, but I covered the festival because when I come back for coverage, and then the the reason why you never get in trouble when you do that is because you take half of a review, put it on there, and say to read the rest of this, click here. And then it pushes back there. Plus, you tag them in the article, so they're getting coverage. You're getting coverage. You you send that back to TIFF. It's all good because we're going to review a lot of these movies because all these movies that you see at TIFF aren't going to come out in theaters. Many of them will be indie joints, and you know. Yeah. So so I thought that that was a great strategy. Now, as it comes to Middleburg, a lot of the movies we watch there, we're reviewing now. Like we saw Belfast there, Jockey, Mass. A, a bunch of other films, Cyrano. There's, I mean, we could put the reviews up, but I've learned over time that you don't want to put movies up so far in advance that the movie mm-hmm. hasn't opened. Or like when people write reviews at Sundance, and I'm like, eh, you know, Nobody's those, gonna those be movies won't that. be out for months. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so that was my question. How do you complete compete with the bigger players when Variety is putting their their well? Well, first of all, you can't you can't compete with Variety and you can't compete with with Hollywood Reporter. Those are trades, and they're going to yeah. do what they do, right? And the studios yeah. have deals that allow them to to kind of publish when they publish. But the bottom line is is that most people are going to relate to who E is, to who Lanita is, yeah. to who yeah. Charles is. So they'll see what variety, but they know you. So people right. who yeah. know me are waiting to hear what I have to say about a movie. Right. I know what variety said, so I wouldn't even trip on that, man. And that's why I said, man, that part of what I, I love doing with this show is, you know, all this stuff right there that here didn't happen by accident, man. This is a lot of years <laughs> in the game. And, you know, I, Charles and I talk about this stuff all the time. I'm like, man, I'm an I'm a open book. Ask me some questions. I can help guide you through this process. It's not that hard, um, but but people don't understand it and and kill themselves. And that's why I'm getting on E right now. I'm like, bruh, next year we need to have a, a different plan, bruh. Do y'all, just a uh, quick question. Do y'all all do this full time? You talking yeah. about review, review no, full time? Uh, yeah, just, just film criticism. Well, another good question. Um, <laughs> when I first started, it was full time. And what I meant by that is that like half our membership at the beginning was full time. You had people who worked at USA Today or reviewed for this station, that station. 
Now the game has sort of changed when you introduce bloggers and podcasters and people of that nature. So film is not necessarily, there's not a lot of people making money full time in journalism unless you're working for a trade, unless you're working for Entertainment Weekly, unless you're working for a major publication. So most people are doing this and then you've got to figure out what your niche is, right? So you got to figure out what where you fit into the, into the cog. And a lot of people get into this thing like Lanita just said the other day or said earlier about trying to compare yourself. I've learned that I walk, I walk in my lane, right? Yeah. Uh, Charles and I, we sit down and have conversations every week about our site. Our site literally has two contributors on it. And if you look at it, we got everything covered for the most part. Uh, what's coming out week to week. Now, we probably do need a couple more writers because I want to branch into more television, but I ain't got that kind of time. I, um, yeah. I do a lot of my reviews uh, by video. I told Charles years ago when I used to work at BET and when I worked at Jet, when they paid me to write, I wrote. When they stopped paying me to write, it became audio. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I write, look, look, I can write now. Y'all ain't paying me. I mean, there's only so many ways I can say a movie is bad. Right. Over and over in the same year. So that that's what I got, man. But we're gonna wrap this the, up. The best thing, the best thing like, before I feel you like go. This has been like a critic you seminar go. today. Before you go. The best thing about festivals is they're usually about eight to ten weeks before a film actually premieres yep. at, at the least. So you're gonna have that much time to to actually yeah. do your in-depth review and then have it post on your site or wherever it is. So, And, and, I, and to follow Charles's point, um, I don't think every festival is the one you need to go to. There's certain key ones, right? So for us, we, we do Sundance, which takes, takes care of like the first half of the year. Um, I get into Tribeca every year. I just don't go to, to Tribeca because that New York thing is kind of too spread out for me. I'm like, I can't really wrap my arms around you know, listening to, to Wilson tell me stories about, I got to take the train to go to this screen and then I'm coming back uptown. I'm like, nah, bro, you're doing way too much work. Um, cons I've never attended. I like TIFF uh, a lot. Um, I haven't done Tell You Ride. So Charles, we may need to investigate that festival. And then the festival that we go to that's locally that's really helpful is Middleburg. So Middleburg is a curated festival by Sheila Johnson and Susan Koch where they usually bring in, Charles, am I wrong, about 30 films a year, that they're all studio Oscar contenders, and normally all the, uh, all the, the foreign language contenders usually play that festival. So we've seen a lot of the films that are nominated and have won Oscars play at Middleburg. So that's the kind of ace in the hole that we have locally that we're able to see so many films in the month of October before the rush of November and December. So, and then my other advice to you guys would be, because you've got uh, the Critics' Choice Association awards coming up pretty soon, is the reason why I want to get a lot of these films seen early is because I start compiling my list because I've got different places that I need to vote. I just vote with the same list. So once I make a list, that's it. So I don't have to go, when, when BFCC hits me up, I go, here's my list. That's smart, when CCA yeah. hits me, here's my list. Charles's case, when WAFCA hits, Here's my list. So, you know, you got to vote over and over. And then Lanita and Charles will have the inevitable task of trying to pick from Heart of Day Fall, Passing, Bruised, um, uh, Respect, and a bunch of other movies for the Black Reel Awards this year. Strap in. It's going to be a good competitive year of stuff <laughs> that's going to be out there. And E, you know, I want you to savor this time because when the books open up, you will be a made man in March. So you the man, bro. This is what I'm we're in now. About. I'm in there. Count me in. <laughs> so I'm wrapping the show up today. I want to thank uh, these two young lions and lionesses that have joined us. Uh, and we hope to have them join us more. Uh, Charles, we were starting to plan our 500th show yesterday. I want to do something live with compilations and people who've done the show. 500 show is going to happen, I think, uh, April the 8th, 2022. So that'll be show 500. So, but I want to congratulations. Eh, you know, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I want to. I want to thank uh, E, uh, who who uh, we is new to the team, but you know I feel a kinship with this brother, and uh, you know I, I just say stay away from his wings because you know I tried to reach for a wing and he almost <laughs> had me. 
Lanita, Lanita, it is always great to see you. Uh, put away them hands, girl. I think you're going to have a good <laughs> award season. And uh, Charles Kirkland, bro, it's always a pleasure. You riding shotgun with us, man. And until next week, as we tell you guys, in closing every week, please see something good at the movies. Belfast, it's your choice this week. Belfast, passing, of course, is on Netflix. Red Notice, get that cotton candy on our website. You know how to find us. Until next week, I'm out. You guys take care and enjoy your day. E, Lanita, peace to both of you guys. Um, thank you guys for doing this with us today. Thank you. Thank you. Have a blast. Thank you. Bye.